The great thing about this project is it demonstrates all the things that you expect can't be done with a ground source heat pump. It's, it's bang in the centre of London, it's five storey flats, it's a hundred year old building and there's no discernible space. On the Everything Electric show we get asked the same three questions again and again. What do we do about retrofitting older buildings with low carbon technology? What about flats and apartment buildings? And how do we make this technology affordable? Well, we've kind of hit the sweet spot here because we've come to see how ground source heating is used in large social housing projects. We're in Kensington in West London and this is the Everything Electric Show. We've teamed up with Duracell Energy to celebrate their brilliant ecosystem of home energy products and their platinum home owner offer by giving away a Duracell bunny. To win, simply watch to the end and answer a question about Fully Charged. This is an Edwardian era housing estate called Sutton Dwellings. It was built in 1913 to help alleviate the lack of social housing in the area at the time. Fast forward to today and it's just undergone extensive regeneration by social housing provider Clarion Housing. These flats have transitioned over time from coal fireplaces to gas heating and now renewable energy. David, can you tell me how this whole project came about? So um, Clarion were undertaking a regeneration project of these four blocks. As they came to deliver the scheme, Clarion had also taken the decision, a strategic decision, to not fit any more gas boilers in any of their new builds or any of their regeneration projects. And when they came to this particular scheme, they had some challenges around how they could fit a heating system without fitting new gas boilers in it. They looked at lots of alternatives, so air source heat pumps, but obviously the, we don't have the space around uh, to be able to fit those in. Um, There's no kind of district heating system to connect to in the area because we're right in the centre of London. Um, and that's where they came, uh, came to Kenza uh, and asked us if we could develop a ground source heat pump solution for the development. Right, so when you say ground source here, I mean, I think a lot of people will think of, you know, maybe they've heard about neighbours doing it, where you r run a pipe a few feet or a couple of feet under the ground. Yep. But that's, different. that's not what you've done here. So we use vertical boreholes to collect the energy from the ground. Right. So across the 81 apartments that we're heating here, we've got 27 boreholes to a depth of around 180 metres. So at 180 metres, that's nearly 10 times the height of these blocks yeah. is the depth that we're drilling down. And for these kind of, this block just behind me here, for these kind of 15, we've got four boreholes in the area just under our feet here. And those four boreholes deliver all of the energy that we need to provide all of the heating and all of the hot water to these blocks via the ground source heat pumps. So then once you've done that, you've got, you've got that heat coming up. So what, how does, is that then transferred into, the, into individual apartments? Sure, so we bring the drilling rig in first. So we drill those vertical boreholes. We insert the borehole probe. So it's just a U-bend of plastic pipe. Right. We feed that down into the hole and that collects that low grade energy from the ground. So it's not like hot, hot. It's not like volcanic right. hot, but it's just warm earth. Exactly. So right. the ground temperature here, undisturbed ground temperature is about kind of 12, 13 degrees. And we just take four or five degrees out of that right. um, through the transfer, through the pipe work. Um, and then that kind of collects together into a, into a manifold and then from that manifold we have pipework that goes up through the building and connects to individual heat pumps with inside each flat. Right. So there's no central plant, there's no central pumps or anything like that. We've got a little ground source heat pump that sits inside each apartment. So what we're kind of trying to do is mimic how gas works but without burning stuff. So we basically right. need an airing cupboard's worth of space. Right. So a little bit more compared to a combi boiler. The main reason for that is we need to store the hot water rather than a combi boiler, which kind of produces it instantaneously. Um, so we'll kind of heat the hot water over the course of a couple of hours, normally overnight, and then you'll have a cylinder of hot water, which means you've got enough for the next day's use. Right. And then the rest of the time, the heat pump's just kind of feeding heat into your radiators, which you just control as you would any other system. Right. But the key is when we go through this transition to renewable heat, we're trying to make it as smooth a transition as possible, yeah. make it familiar for people to ease that transition. So people are used to having infrastructure in the street that's owned by someone else yeah. that gives them some energy and then they have a white box that converts that energy into heat that they use and they operate that white box when they want to and just pay the bill at the end of it. And we're replicating exactly the same right. thing here. So David, this is well. What I'm seeing here is a hot water tank, but there's, there's presumably there's a box down there. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. So the box at the bottom, that's our heat pump. That's, right. the, that's the bit that's doing the work. Right. Um, so what's going on is from the boreholes that we saw outside, yeah. um, we've got the pipe work comes up through a riser in the middle of the building, splits down and then drops down in the two pipes in the corner. Um, that's got our kind of cool water that we've kind of warmed up a little bit from the ground. So right. it'll be kind of two to six degrees, something like that, where it comes up out of the ground. Um, we bring that down and into the heat pump and then the heat pump does the bit where it squeezes and compresses that energy and upgrades that into useful heat. So right. we'll take that low temperature and upgrade it into kind of 45 to 50 degrees right. that we can then use for heating and, and for heating the hot water cylinder. And so, oh, I see. So it does both. So it not only does the central heating in yep. this apartment, but it also heats the, the hot water. Exactly. And the, wow. and the great thing about doing that is for every kilowatt of electric we put into the heat pump, we get three to four kilowatts of heat delivered to the building. That's right. why you get the 300 to 400% efficiency. It's that little bit of electric that runs the compressor that that, that, that then kind of transfers that that low grade heat into useful high temperature heat to run run the system. So then in terms of cost, you know, the, the difference between having a gas boiler, which you'd have to have on a wall, I suppose, so it goes outside, the difference between running that for the people who live here, running that and running this, is what are the price differentials or are there any? Yeah, sure. So um, the cost of electricity is much higher than the cost of gas. That's, that's kind of part of the problem with the transition to right. kind of electri electrification of heat. But the way it works is that gas or electricity is around three times the cost of gas. Right. Um, but your heat pump's about 300% efficient and your gas boiler is only about 80% efficient. So right. you, when you work through the, the, the kind of relative efficiencies, you end up with an operating cost that's going to be about the same, if not a little bit cheaper right. than a gas boiler. And the difference here is that the resident won't have a gas standing charge because they've taken the gas out of the building. Right. Um, and for the residents that live in this building, all they'll do is pay for their heat as part of the uh, their electricity bill, so there's no other there's no other bill to pay. Right, so they're not paying for the for the, the operating of the whole system because that's their bit. That's, that's it. all they pay for. Exactly. So even the pump that circulates the fluid all the way through the ground ray, all the way down right. the boreholes and back, is inside the heat pump. So all of the running cost is individual. So you right. only pay for the heat at the point at which you use it. Obviously, there's a cost to install all of the infrastructure. Yeah. And in the future, the way we see this rolling out at scale is, again, like you do with the gas grid, we externally fund all of the infrastructure that goes in the street. So a utility provider can fund, own and operate the ground array. Right. That reduces the cost to the person that lives in the home. But then they can connect to that infrastructure and pay a standing charge in exactly the same way when you build a new home. You don't pay for all the gas infrastructure. You yeah. just pay a standing charge when you connect. And we want to just replicate exactly the same thing, but taking away the fossil fuels and using ground source heat pumps instead. One of the things that a lot of people, you know, the misconceptions about heat pumps is you know, oh, you've got to have the right building and I can't afford to do it and I live in an apartment. The great thing about this project is it demonstrates all the things that you expect can't be done with a yes. ground source heat pump. <laughs> it's, it's bang in the centre of London, it's five storey flats, it's a hundred year old building and there's no discernible space. Um, yet we've got the system in and it's operating and, you know, it's a great example of, of how we can deploy and scale up the technology. Yeah. Um, in terms of kind of the acceptance of it, I think one of the great things about about the technology is now it's done there's no visual impact whatsoever yeah. you can't tell that we've been here until you go inside one of the apartments and open the cupboard and look at the heat pump yeah. itself so very low impact so good for the residents the other great thing about that is because we're not burning anything um, there's no air pollution impact right. um, so there's no NOx emissions at the point of use of heating so from a clean air point of view kind of these blocks compared to the ones over there that are still on gas right. we're not having kind of any direct impact so yeah. yeah we're expecting it to to be kind of yeah kind of well adopted by uh, by the people when they move in. So David why do you think we need projects like this? For us it's another really important demonstrator of how we can scale up renewable heat and deploy it in areas where people expect it to be difficult. Um, within the kind of transition to, to renewable heat you know there's going to be central city areas that are going to be served with big district heating schemes and about 20% of the UK is going to move across to that as a, as a source of heating. And then there's kind of another 20% of the UK which is really sparse and rural and out in the middle of nowhere and they'll have individual heat pumps. And then there's this kind of big swathe in the middle of kind of suburban kind of semi-dense environments where neither of those solutions 
are applicable because they have their own unique challenges and that's where we feel like this our ground source heat pump solution slots in because we can serve dwellings like this so terraced houses low-rise flats relatively low density areas but in city centers we've got the ability to kind of scale up and and transition to a system that offers you know low zero carbon or low carbon right now but zero carbon as the grid transitions yeah. um, but also comparative running costs to, to fossil fuels and kind of a healthier environment for, for the people that are living in the area. So what we've learned today is that networked heat pumps and shared heating infrastructure could really have the potential to help UK homes shift away from burning fossil fuels. It's hoped that projects like this can serve as a blueprint for other social housing providers and for the thousands of apartments and flats in the UK once considered too complex to decarbonise, as well as ensuring that the benefits of clean energy technologies can be experienced by many more people. So let us know what you think in the comments and please do tell your mates about the Everything Electric show. Do remember to subscribe, you can even like it. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be just as effective without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Your installation also comes with a 20 point check, a six month performance review, system health checks at three and 10 year periods and outstanding local UK customer support every step of the way. Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters and DV chargers work together on one easy to use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximize your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about fully charged by following the link in the description. Good luck.